Investigators are trying to find the cause of that bus crash in New Orleans. They're looking at the driver's medical history and whether a car may have cut him off. 22 of the old people on board that bus died. Another 15 are at the hospital. And the crash of that charter bus is raising a lot of questions again about safety. And about all the accidents we've had around here. And what Mary Garofalo find, found is going to have you shaking your head. She's at the Port Authority right now. Mary. John, are you one of the thousands of people that arrive here at the Port Authority every day? Well, just how much do you know about your bus driver? Do you know that he or she may be working more than one job and only getting three or four hours of uh, sleep a night? Well, those are just some of the startling things that we uncovered in our Fox 5 hidden camera investigation. Eight people died. Several more were injured when their bus overturned on a snowy patch of highway. A second bus crashes in New Jersey. Police are investigating yet another serious bus accident in New Jersey. We've all seen the twisted wreckages and wondered what the heck is going on on New Jersey highways. Since last December alone, nine major bus accidents have taken place on our roads. Authorities are blaming it in part on driver fatigue. Fatigue is definitely a problem. Uh, it is potentially as much as 30 to 40 percent of the accident causation. And fatigue is the focus of our Fox 5 hidden camera investigation. And the recent accidents that they've had? Yeah. At first they thought it was one thing, then another, then they've come to realize it's really uh, fatigue. You get a lot of guys that are working themselves half to death. This man drives part-time for Academy Bus Lines based out of New Jersey. His candidness uncovers a disturbing trend among some bus drivers making them driving time bombs, accidents waiting to happen. You look so nice. Ever wondered why your bus driver is so well dressed? Well, maybe it's because your bus driver is working two jobs. I'm ready. It's time to go. Six fifty. This driver, who we met at the Port Authority waiting for his passengers to board, told us he's the vice president of a securities firm in Manhattan. And that's where our cameras caught up with him after his morning ride into the city. You must have a long day. Oh, I do. Oh, what yeah. Time do you, what time do you get up in the morning? I get up at 4... That's 4 a.m. This was 6 p.m. He was working his 14th hour with another three-hour drive ahead of him to Tom's River, New Jersey. And you get home at what time? Nine. He told us he does this every day for an additional $300 a week. Care to guess what this part-time driver does full-time? What do you do full-time? I work for Japanese Bank. Oh, my goodness. But it's like a full-time job because I work on weekends, too. After the 5 a.m. drive into Manhattan from Tom's River, we followed this driver to his full-time job as vice president of corporate loans for this Japanese bank on Fifth Avenue. We only deal with commercial lending and... Uh, and then, 15 hours from our first ride with him, we were driving back to New Jersey with a busload of tired passengers who had just finished working their own eight-hour day. They had no clue how long our bus driver had been awake. Oh, I used to get home between 9.30 and 4 o'clock. Aren't you exhausted? Four hours of sleep and plenty of job. Four hours of sleep a night and I was driving to New Jersey with him? And that's not all. He says he also works full-time on the weekends, driving passengers to and from Atlantic City. According to the Federal Department of Transportation, both full-time and part-time drivers can only be on the road for a maximum 10 hours a day with a mandatory 8-hour rest period. If a second job is involved, the driver can only work a total of 15 hours a day with a 70-hour maximum for the week. What we discovered was a blatant violation of DOT rules by both full-time and part-time drivers. How long have you worked for Academy? Two years. Two years? Full-time or part-time? Part-time. What do you do during the day? Repair elevators. Do you think that the safety issue ever comes into question if you've been up for 14 or 15 hours and then you're driving home? There's always a safety issue with it, but um, you get used to it. Like, I'm used to it now. How many hours do you think you sleep? Three to four. Are you a full-time driver or part-time driver? Uh, this is part-time. I've been doing it part-time for 10 years. And what do you do full-time? Uh, right now, I'm working for the New York Stock Exchange in a controller's office. Give me an idea of how your day works. Okay, thank God I don't require a lot of sleep. Um, normally, I get up about 3.05 in the morning. About 20 to 5, I'm on the bus. Park the bus about 7.15, then go to work at the exchange. 5.45, I'm here. Do a run home. I get home about 8.30 tonight. The grand total... A 17-hour day, every day. And here's another strange twist. 
Academy Bus Line subcontracts some of its drivers to the New Jersey Transit Authority. We found this driver getting ready to head home, except he wasn't wearing his bus uniform. Now, I noticed you've got a FedEx uniform on Federal Express. That's my main job. So how does your day work? I wake up every day at 4 a.m. in the morning, and then I'm back usually in my house by about quarter to 7, 7 o'clock. It's a long day. Why do you work such crazy hours? <laughs> it's, the money is good. But the circumstances aren't. Because these drivers cross state lines, they are required by law to turn in log books, keeping track of their hours. But some drivers told us those books are often doctored. You get away from because there's not enough inspectors out there. There's not enough uh, police out there. There's, you know, uh, I could dock them. You know, I could do it as a, um, as a driver. Nobody knows that my log is doctored. And I had a DOT officer told me how to do it. This part-time driver who says he's had four accidents in three years says the company forces them to work more than their allotted hours, despite how tired they may be. I think these guys build up adrenaline to do this, okay, where uh, they are probably tired, but they'll never admit it and uh, take it from there. If something happens, it happens. What these bus drivers say is happening isn't the way that Academy representative Daniela Biancanotti sees it. When they come to Academy, our, uh, our manager, our terminal manager, checks the logs and makes sure that they're within federal guidelines and also just make sure that the, the dri our drivers are prepared to drive. If they're fatigued in any way, they will not be allowed to drive. Academy has drivers right up to today, right now, full-timers that are out of hours that continue to drive. DOT officials refuse to be interviewed for this story because they say they cannot and will not regulate a driver's rest time. So in other words, if a driver chooses to work during his eight hours off or sleep during his eight hours off, it's really his own prerogative. Now remember, the drivers we spoke to said they were only sleeping three to four hours a night. No, I think that for most of us, uh, four hours of sleep doesn't cut it. All this is very disturbing news to Joe Osterman from the National Transportation Safety Board, who says the DOT has ignored their recommendations to change a bus driver's rest hours. You can't get eight hours of sleep if all you have is eight hours off. That's pretty clear. Uh, we've made recommendations to extend that time frame, but they simply have not been able to bring themselves to change the rules for the hours of service thus far. If the government gets off the butt and put a 12 and 12 hour instead of, you know, working a 70 hour week, I think you see better rest of drivers. Now, Academy Bus Services says that they, in fact, have the lowest accident rate amongst all the bus carriers and that fatigue amongst their drivers is really not an issue. In the meantime, some of the drivers for Academy sent me copies of letters that they've written to politicians trying to convince them that this, in fact, is a very real problem. Now, if you have a story you'd like us to investigate, please give us a call here at Fox News. Our number